Hey my friends, this is Sean Thomas coming at you live once again from California Superbike School here at Willow Springs Raceway. Um, having a good time riding the S1000RR. Well, something's come up. I mentioned earlier that I was riding this motorcycle in what's referred to as rain mode. For those of you who don't know, um, this motorcycle has several different settings. Rain mode um, makes the bike have diminished horsepower. It has a much smoother throttle response. It has very aggressive traction control and ABS brakes, all of which designed to keep a delicate flower like me from crashing the motorcycle. I got a lot of flack from my friends telling me, hey, you should be riding this bike in one of the more aggressive modes. Stop being a sissy. Well, um, for you guys, I really don't care if you think I'm a sissy, but I am interested to know how this bike reacts differently when it's in one of the other modes. So I'm gonna put it in sport mode next, and in sport mode, I'm gonna have more horsepower, a little less traction control, a little less ABS, and we're gonna see how this bike reacts differently in my delicate hands in a new mode. So stick with me and my new Cena cam as we film ourselves around the track in sport mode. Rock on! All right, time to put this bike in a different mode. Mode button, sport. Sport mode. And let's see how different the bike is in that mode. Okay, we got the green light. All right, sport mode. Let's see what you got for me. All right, I'm gonna take a nice and easy the first lap. Make it less about speed and more about getting all the right lines. Oh, I can already tell the difference in the bike. There is so much more power when I touch the throttle. Now I'm coming up on the back straight and I'm going to use this opportunity to really see how sport mode goes. So let's lift it up and off we go, baby. Oh! Oh, yeah! <laughs> yeah, buddy! I really feel the pull on. The throttle response is still really smooth. There's no real spikes in the power. It just comes on stronger. A lot of opportunity to get myself in trouble with that mode. And this isn't even the highest modes. This still got race and slick mode to play with, which are even more powerful, even less electronics to inhibit your riding style. The cost being that you gotta really know what you're doing. And on this bike, new for 2015, on the standard is user mode, where you can go in and pick all your favorite attributes of each mode, put them all together to make your own personal custom setup, which is pretty cool. Wow, that has got power. down and drop it in. Ah, uh, I like that execution. That turn's feeling better every time. Coming in. Nice, big, arching turn. Leave my weight to the inside. Straight up the bike and throw on. so much power. And find my way around this guy. I think I'll wait until the the bowl turn where the turn goes heavily into camber before I pass him. That is right here. Coming around him a little bit on the outside. Rolling out. is so sure-footed. I mean, I just stopped thinking about having enough traction yesterday. 
The bike has just got it everywhere. It never destabilizes. Of course, I'm not pushing it anywhere near as hard as some of the other guys here. But still, it's a really good feeling to know that the bike is going to stick when you need it to. So what I'm going to do now, because I'm a dutiful student, and you didn't really know this bike, I'm going to switch it from sport to race riding mode. That's going to give me even more power and even less electronic interference. What's really cool on this bike is you can do it on the fly. So all I have to do is pick a spot where I feel comfortable, hit the mode button twice, and I'll be in the new, roll out the throttle and back on, and I'm in the new mode. It's pretty cool. Here's my spot, mode, race mode. And I'm now in race mode. Oh, jeez. I can already feel the power difference. Jeez. It's got even more power. What happens is the traction control is diminished. The traction control on this bike is based on lean angle, so... So anyway, traction control on this bike diminishes throttle because it pays attention to lean angle. So the more I'm leaning, the less it allows me to power through. There's Dylan. Getting ahead of me. Gonna have me follow him so I can work on my line. Stand the bike up. is so much more powerful, but it's still really manageable. Feels great. Dylan Code is a true professional. He's an exceptional rider. He's got a great attitude. He connects well with his students. Just feel really confident and trustworthy guy. All right, for this lap, I'll do a little shifting. I'm in third and drop into second. Now I'm in second gear, drop the bike in, apex through, power out, way more power. Leave it in second. Drop in for the apex. So much more power coming out in second gear. There's a much more into the power band. Not that this bike has a big power band. There's power everywhere. What's great about shifting this bike is it doesn't require any change in the clutch or throttle. So you can shift up and down. The bike automatically compensates. It's really weird because you hear the difference in the bike, the RPMs change, but you don't feel much of anything else. The bike doesn't shake or shimmy or anything. Coming out into third, into third, 120 miles an hour. Drop into the third, second gear again. Taking this turn in second. It's a little wide, but that's all right. Now we'll see, when we get to this next straight, how much more power I get coming out of it in second. All right, I'm in. If I can power up. Oh yeah, buddy. It's 130 miles an hour right there. I just downshifted in the middle of a turn. Bike didn't do a damn thing. You try doing that on any conventional race bike, shaking and sliding all over the track if you stay upright at all. It's like this bike lets you cheat. Screw that turn up. A lot of it just comes to getting used to the power. There's so much more power coming into the turns right now. up the bike and drop the hammer. Oh, jeez! <laughs> so much freaking power! Wow. You just... You know,
know, someday we're going to look back at this bike and say, that was one of the more anemic motorcycles that was out there in sport bike world, but back then it seemed really powerful. I'm here to tell you, I can't imagine ever thinking about that. That about this bike. It is so smooth and so powerful. So confidence inspiring. Look at this. Fourth gear, roll on. Fourth gear, fifth gear. And when it's time to get on the brakes, the bike is totally stable. No shake, no shimmy. Just no problem, man. I got your back. Easily the most confidence inspiring motorcycle I've ever ridden. Oh, heavy brakes. Jim just went. That's Keith. I got Jim Hyde up ahead of me. I'm gonna go catch him. They say that all your training goes to shit when you see somebody you want to catch. Because all you can think about is going after him. And I gotta tell you, that's about right. Going after Jim, something fierce. Oh. oh, that sounds so good. You can smell the rubber and the gasoline. It's just kick ass. start to see every time a rider takes a wide line you get a, a foot closer to him a little bit at a time you wait for your spot to catch him and then when you see it you go after it just like that hey. and last turn and I'm pitting out. But there you have it, my friends. Two days, California Superbike School. <laughs> it's gonna be hard to believe, but I'd say I probably took about 20 seconds off my lap time. 20 seconds. That is amazing. That's not to say that I started out fast to begin with, but still, man, this is the place to learn how to ride on the street. No doubt about it. No doubt about it at all. So. If you know how to ride on the asphalt, you have good command of your clutch and throttle and your brakes, and you're ready for the next step, this is the place to go. Good people, great skill sets. So, 